Melanie Baker. You're yes. the community manager for Aid RSS, a new position uh, that Aid RSS created pretty early in its development, um, less than a dozen employees, and one of them is the community manager. Tell me a bit about uh, why a community manager for a, for a startup. Um, well, the biggest thing is that our user base is entirely online. Um, so we need to be able to connect with our user base, our potential user base. Um, and there's so much to do in a startup, that, and not all of it's development. So you need someone who can bridge the gap between the marketing, the customer service, the, you know, the QA, um, between the business and the tech side. So uh, this early on, it's definitely important because what's going to grow our business is our users and developing our users into community. Um, because having a user base doesn't necessarily mean you have a community. Um, if you can get a community going, then you're on, on the right track. Are you seeing the early signs that you are getting a community going of eight RSS users? I think so. I've been really impressed with the users that I've talked to or people who've become users um, and the amount of passion they have, what they're willing to do for you, um, you know, the lengths they're willing to go to try and make something work. If they find something that isn't working, um, the lengths they'll go to to explain what they've found. Um, I've had people send screenshots, video, um, you know, go looking for even more examples of stuff to send us to help us figure out problems and fix them, which is amazing. Um, you know, you'd have to have an entire QA department for that, for that kind of stuff or, you know, massive amounts of developer hours to, to solve some of those things. Um, and when you just listen to them, if you, you know, honestly try and help them solve a problem um, or get them up and running, explain how things work, um, they become passionate so quickly. And of course, as soon as they become passionate, they help evangelize for you, um, which is fantastic because, I mean, it just it spreads out my ability because I teach people and then they teach people and, and uh, I mean, the word of mouth of your friends is, is the most powerful uh, influence that there is, so it's fantastic. Are there other uh, online or social uh, applications that you're using to connect with the community? Um, basically, you know, I have to be one of those early adopters who kind of jumps on everything. Um, so yeah, the, the blog is a good way. Uh, Get Satisfaction has been fantastic. Um, it's really effective for, for connecting with people, whether it, they have a question, they just want to tell us something, or if they have a problem. Um, you know, the two Twitter accounts, I have my own and I have the ADRSS one, um, and people are welcome to connect with me either way. Um, and then as well, you know, other social sites that come up. We have a Facebook presence now, um, you know, all I could make a list that goes on forever, mm -hmm. but at the very least, you know, you need to try it out, see if people are migrating there, and see if people want to come talk to you there. If that's where people are going to hang out, then that's where you need to be. Um, and I don't think there's a massive amount of difference in what these sites do. So, I mean, once you're on one, it's fairly easy to ramp up and get an idea of what your channels of communication are going to be and you know potentially see the value in different things you know, a, a twitter is easier for someone to ask me a quick question or mention a problem and then what likely happens is it migrates to a different format it either goes into um, get satisfaction and it gets kind of officially logged or you know somebody has a longer question to ask so they email me um, or you know we start up an instant messenger chat um, and i find that combination of tools is is how things really end up working so while it's important to be in a variety of formats and on a variety of platforms, um, it's also important to be able to be flexible to move between them, um, you know, whichever format is most comfortable for people. Um, you know, back when I used to work at insurance companies, people would call you. Uh, when I worked in tech companies, nobody wanted to talk on the phone. Switch industries and all of a sudden the culture is different and all of a sudden I'm taking all these phone calls. You'd send an email, somebody calls you back or comes to your desk to discuss it. So as long as you're flexible about about where you talk to people and, and you know you know what you can tell them, then they're usually happy. Okay. Melanie, thanks very much. Thank you.